up guys this year boy barca boy 103 just finished watching the match and barcelona beat real betis at the benito via marine by four goals to two in what was a very strong performance and of course a crucial win for the league title race absolute scenes at this game as well very up and down but majority up for Barcelona. The lineup for this match is on the screen right now. It was a Naki Pena in goal, a back four of Kunde, Araujo, Kubrarsi, and Balde. Midfield three of Dion, Gunduan, and Pedri, and a front three of Lamen Yamal, Lewandowski, and Ferran Torres. A very strong lineup selection from Xavi. And this has by far, without a shadow of a doubt, been our best performance in a game since we beat Atletico Madrid 1 0 beginning of December. I believe we're now almost at the end of January. This was a very good performance. Not perfect, not chavy ball, not champagne football, but a dominant performance where we saw Barcelona control the tempo of the game, you know, cruise to the defense, to the attack, and you felt comfortable in this game. Never was I nervous, never was, well, I was nervous you know, in the second half, but I'm talking about that first half performance where it was so calm and composed from Barcelona. Yes, Betis had one uh, chance earlier on with Luis Henrique, but after that, cruise control from Barcelona. And again, this is what we want to see. Week in, week out, going to these difficult stadiums and controlling the game, doing the tempo based on how we want to display it. I thought every single player but one, we'll talk about that, was brilliant today. I don't think anyone put in a poor performance, and I want to see more of this. We got to talk about the goals. The first one, absolutely sublime buildup between Gundogan and Pedri, slipped to the Fernand Torres who tapped it into the open net. Second goal right after halftime as well, Lamen Yamal down the byline. I think he went for a cross but it ended up hitting the post. Joseph Fernand scored it. The third goal was just magical. The link up between Gundogan, Joao Felix, Ferran, the touch from Ferran as well. Brilliant. The outside the foot finish from Joao Felix, world class. Kiss the badge as well afterwards, so you know, we'll leave that out there. And the fourth goal, of course, Ferran for the hat trick through ball, I believe it was by Lamen Yamal. 1v1. When he was 1v1, I knew for a fact that like, he's gonna chip it. If he chips it, he either scores it or he misses it. But usually, when pl uh, players are on a hat trick full of confidence, they go for the chip in the 1v1 for the hat trick. Ferran does so, points to the away end as well on every single one of his goals, and of course, secures the three points. I tell you what, man, this now is giving us confidence. And I was going into this game with a good feeling as well. Even this morning, I'm waking up thinking, I feel like it's going to be something good here. Because again, we have two, you know, season-defining games for Barcelona. Away, Benito Biaverin, midweek, Sam Mess in the cup as well. Real Madrid were losing earlier in the day as well, going, you know, 2-0 down to bottom of the table. Al Maria, who have not won a game. Corruption there happened. They end up getting the win. It is what it is, as we expected. So I'm not too surprised. But you had this, I, I personally, I don't know about you guys, had this good feeling today. And I think it came true. I'm now not super confident for midweek, but I have more optimism going that game following this performance. Now, in regards to the individual players that we have to talk about, we have to go through it. Firstly, in goal, Inaki Pena, without a shadow of a doubt, the worst player on the whole pitch. I've been telling you guys this since the Antwerp game, and Naki Pena is on far watch. Makes one good save against the Pies free kick in the other game. Oh, better than Ter, St Ter Statue. Get Ter Statue out. Blah, blah, blah. Naki Pena is the future. Shite! He's absolutely woeful, not only in goal, but in distribution, in commanding of the box, communication, and most importantly, in the air. Oh my god, cannot catch a ball to save his life. Both, not the first, not the second goal for Betis, both Betis goals all on Anaki Pena. Dreadful today. If you look at the second goal, where again, questionable offside, Borja Iglesias gets involved, blah, 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 it was given, whatever. If you watch, because they showed that replay a lot, just watch Naki Pena. He kind of comes out, stutters a bit, comes out, stutters a bit, then commits when Isco has a ball and then lops him over. Woeful. If we dropped points in this game, it would all have been on Naki Pena. 100%. Get Ter Stegen back as soon as possible. And I would even maybe look at some offers for Naki Pena this summer because he's now been given a three-month span of a big opportunity of his lifetime to be, you know, cement himself as someone's, you know, successor to Ter Stegen. Failed every single test. Yeah, he made a good save um, against, what, Osasuna or Madrid, whatever. But the way he commands the ball, because, again, with the Barcelona goalkeeper, usually, you know, it's been, you know, different recently, but usually you're going to have a quiet game. In the sense, there's going to be rare moments where you have to be on alert. He's failed every single test in Naki in my opinion. Shocking. 
Kunde, right back, thought he had a brilliant game defensively going forward as well, making good runs, had some superb tackles as well. I think Arujo, you know, he, he got the buzz cut, took out the blonde uh, hair, shaved the beard. He looked all right in this game, to be fair. A lot of hoof balls from him, and his passing wasn't, again, the best, but defensive-wise, thought he was good. Pau Kubrasi. This man is 16 years old. To be fair, he is turning 17 tomorrow. 16 years old. Barcelona full starting debut at the Benedito Via Marin. What a performance. Hopefully, he went off with just some cramp. I don't think it was a serious injury, because he kind of signaled to the bench to come off. He didn't come off for like another 10 to 15 minutes. Hopefully, it's nothing too serious with his injury, but... My god, I tell you what, the uh, which goal was it? I think it was the second goal, the Ferran Torres goal, the one that, at the start of the second half. That cut pass that Cobrasi did between three Betis players to find Frankie De Jong in that space. Brilliant. We have a talent on our hand. Indigo Martinez, when he comes back, have him for another year, bid him and promote uh, Cobrasi. Absolutely sublime performance from him. Balde, to be fair to him, I thought he had an alright game. I think again going forward. He doesn't give me any confidence whatsoever, especially with his crossing, but I think his recovery to, uh, runs today, defending, I thought he put in a good shift to be fair to him, but again, poor guy is occupying that whole entire left flank on his own because Fran Torres is too busy cutting inside, had, you know, hugging Lewandowski in the middle of the pitch, although he did go wide second half as well, but I think Baldi overall had a good game. Good to one, thought he played well. Frankie de Jong. Frankie de Jong. I'm seeing people on Twitter saying that Barcelona should sell him. Are you high? Oh, brilliant today. Again, he got a yellow card because he was complaining about the Pedri foul for the first goal, which, by the way, was a foul 100%. I don't know how that wasn't given. But my God, his recovery tackle today, brilliant. Runs in behind, superb. Crosses into the box, defending. Had to drop the center back. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. Pedri, I thought he had a good game as well, similar on the ones of uh, like Ilkay Gundogan, kind of performed at the level that I expected them. Same with Frankie as well, but Frankie just does these extra, you know, magical moments here and there where you're thinking, Madre Mia, absolutely brilliant player. Of course, Pedri did get assist, assist as well, credit to him. Uh, let's start with Lewandowski first. Lewandowski, I think, had a quiet game. Again, I think the main issue with Lewandowski at the moment is his decision-making, especially in the final third when it comes down to just himself. I remember the uh, chance in the first half where he was thrown goal, even though he's offside. He stutter shot it twice and then shot it. I think Socrates was the one who blocked it. I'm thinking, Broski, you gotta hit that for a time. You have Pizella and Socrates both breathing down your neck. They're gonna come and put in the challenge. Why are you trying to fake shot to throw off the goalkeeper? At least get a shot on target. Especially his link-up play with Ferran Torres and Lamendi Yamal wasn't the greatest. I think Chavi, we'll talk about Chavi later on, taking him off. But I think Lunosi had a bit of a quiet day, but I don't think he'll hinder his uh, starting place for the cup game midweek. We gotta talk about the two other forwards. First of all, Lamendi Yamal. This man is 16 years old. I tell you, man, if he was available for Barbastro and Unionistas in the cup, I think he would have been an undisputed starter by now. I think those two games, especially us not having him with his suspension, I think if he played those games, we really, really, really would have seen the true Lemon Yamal. My god. And I said in the match preview, this is the game where you want to start Lemon Yamal. You need that pure winger to attack that side of Betis and create chances from the flank. He did that today. He essentially played the Rafinha role today. When I say he did a bit on Rafinha, you no, know, I think it's very much the same, uh, you know, performance levels. You know, Rafinha always gets goals and assists. I think what we really miss, well, the difference between Lamen Yamal and Rafinha is that pace, which again we talked about a lot last season with Dembele and Rafinha. The pace that Lamen Yamal uses, we know that Rafinha has the pace, but he doesn't tend to use it. He'll, he'll cut back if he sees the space, he'll exploit it, but he won't always attack that space when Lamen Yamal does. I thought Lamen Yamal today superb, got the beautiful assist as well for the fourth goal, I believe, on Ferran Torres. Five for Ferran Torres, look, I think he had a good game, missed a few chances to be fair. I'm not not hindering him, probably a 9, 10 out of 10 performance from him with the hat-trick and the assist. Missed a few chances, but I thought he was brilliant, especially on the Joao Fierce goal. I think he was integral in the link-up play to create that chance as well. The touchdown to Gundogan, then of course he gave, I think, the actual assist to Felix as well. I think Ferran Torres had a sublime performance, and now I think he's really cementing himself as a starter again. If you look at the goals, the two, the first two were both the tap-ins. I understand that you had to be there at the right place, right time. I still not a fan of Fran Torres playing so like so much beside uh, Lewandowski. He's not playing as that wide forward where he's you know getting these goals from that we've seen that he scored. But I don't, I don't really like him you know cutting inside too much. I think that's maybe just tactical from my point of view. And finally, the manager Chavi. Look, Chavi for me, full flowers to him. Picked the correct team, and we have to talk about his in-game management and substitutions. His substitutions were absolutely sublime. Pinpoint perfection. I think even uh, with Kubrasi coming off injury, you're thinking, oh, Roberto's going to come in, shift Kunde inside. No, he dropped Frankie back and brought in uh, Joao Felix as well to have more of an attacking dynamic. I think Xavi 
is really now hopefully putting the pressure on these players to perform. I think he had a great performance today, Chabi, from the lineup selection to again, we played our best football in two months in that first half. It was just that the 55th minute to the 75th minute where Betis were all over us. And then that was more so momentum shift and the uh, crowd getting on top of us as well. You can't really blame that on Chavi. I think the players have to take a lot of credit for that as well. But again, like I already mentioned, both goals 100% on Inaki Pena. But Chavi today for me, full credit to him as well. I think without his, you know, decision making and his ballsiness as well, taking off Lewandowski at the hour mark. Never done that before, but you know what? Now Victor Roque is somewhat getting fit physic physically to, you know, play in Europe and La Liga. He's giving him the minutes that I think that Victor Roque deserves as well. Listen, he's making the moves, uh, you know, bringing on from in for uh, Pedri as well. I thought that was quite ballsy, uh, to say the least. And, of course, starting Cobrasi, 16-year-old, after, you know, a decent 45 minutes against Unioristas, third division team, starts to make the Bandito Villa Marin. Like, we're talking top five, you know, biggest stadiums in Spain and difficult away games. Starting. Credit to Chavi today. I thought he had a brilliant performance from a managerial point of view and, of course, secured Barcelona three massive points. But now, all focus shifting to the Cup midweek. Sam mess. They have some injury problems. They just came off losing their uh, winning streak as well against Valencia. And probably our best chance of winning a trophy this season. We have to go full force into that game and hopefully we can get a result. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on the performance today, on the result, your thoughts on Chavi's team selection, his substitutions, individual performances. Do you agree with me that Inaki Pena was at fault for both goals? Leave me all your thoughts down below. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and force a Barca. Oh,